and welcome to Nug and Simic Review DC Comics, The New 52, where every week Nug and I review every single one of the new DC titles. I'm Andrew Simic. And I'm Nug, and we are into the sixes. We've six months of uh, The New 52 has gone by, and we know some of these issues don't make it past eight. Uh, a lot of the issues that we review this week uh, are some that have been canceled. Yeah, unfortunately for some others, we're glad to never have to read those. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, well, let's get things started right away this week with Red Lanterns. Hey, we get to meet the new human yeah. Red Lantern, whose name is apparently Rancor. Uh, never said once, the whole issue. Yeah. And I thought that the cat was the Earth Red Lantern. I think I would have preferred the cat. I think I do prefer the cat. Uh, it's not that I, I hated this issue. Um, you guys know how we feel about the Red Lantern's run. Uh, we actually haven't minded it that, that much. Oh. Um, but this issue, maybe it's, it's going to be a plot device that comes back later, but I was kind of curious. It seems like the human re, uh, Red Lantern has some thinking ability, where I thought that once you transform... You know, you became just, mindless. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on. I mean, maybe they'll explore that later. I mean, Guy did have some control, but he seemed a lot more rage filled. Uh, this one seems to be able to calm, like almost as if he's having an out of body experience where he's. What am I doing? Right. Which was a lot of that. What am I doing? How am I flying? Hey, maybe that just proves that humans are the smartest ones in the galaxy and we can handle it a lot better than these other jellyfish races. Well, we can. Well, okay. Well, clearly that's what they're saying. Perfect. All right. Great book. Uh, yeah, great book. <laughs> uh, Red Lanterns continues to go ooh, yeah, for I, us. I would actually say that this week's is not a pickup. No. Um, but it's not terrible. No. It's floating. All right. Moving on. Batwing. Uh, the uh, 14th of the 14 tie-in issues that include Batman. 14 issues uh, of the new 52 that yeah. all have to do with Batman. How many? 14. There you go. Uh, so here's, I don't, maybe I'll say this is number 13. <laughs> uh, but uh, Batwing continues to not have backgrounds, uh, and people are just floating in midair. But we get to learn a little more about the kingdom, which is what I actually am interested in. And you know what, Nug, I, you make a lot of good points about the kingdom. And I think that if this book was just about the kingdom, oh. it would be on the top. Yes. But it seems like all the great the gooey bits of great story are told in flashbacks. And we want to know that, mm -hmm. and instead we're kind of stuck in this detective uh, comic where we're finding out about that. And, and then you made such a great point when I was like, oh great, it looks like they're going to Gotham to find those two guys from the kingdom. And then you made that great point of why Batwing is Africa's Batman. Yeah. So why would you leave Africa? And this is where it's kind of like, well, the answer is so that we can put the other heroes in the book and, you know, hopefully that'll boost sales. I See, that's where it's like I struggle with the story doesn't actually need them. No. Um, and then and, you're, and you said the same thing. Batwing's going to tie into this Court of Owls thing, Snyder's Court of Owls, and I don't think that's necessary. No, I mean, and, and Judd Winnick, I still believe, has done a good job setting up the backstory of the heroes in Africa. Um and who Batwing is, and in this issue we get a revelation over the villain, uh, which is all very, very nice. I actually don't think it needs to go to Gotham. No! It, it can exist on its own, but the, uh, the teases are more exciting than the actual story, and I think that's my issue with Batwing. Not that it's a bad book, there are still no backgrounds, like Nug said, <laughs> um, but it could be great with, yeah. the, with the Kingdom. It really could, but it's not. All right. Uh, Hawk and Dove, oh, wait a minute, it's Batman and Dove, uh, one of our first cancelled books. Um, there's that part of me that goes, why do I read this if I know it's ending in two issues? I open it for up. For you. We do it for you. I open it up and see artwork I hate. Then I open it up and Robin shows up. And Robin is uh, Damien. And how old's Damien? Ten. Okay, he looks like he's about 23 uh, in most of the artwork here. I have been very kind with um, criticizing the artwork on this book because I think that, first off, let's not even uh, go to the artwork. The story's not there. And I think that if you're going down the list, the story has to be there, then the art adds to the story. Uh, the story's not there. This is the first issue where I was actually 
upset uh, because Damien is drawn. I mean, you had to ask me, which Robin is this? And Here's what like, I love. Well, it's obviously Damien. Look at Batwing down here. Judd Winnick, Ben Oliver, Brian Reber. And then on Red Lanterns, you've got four names across the bottom because yeah. these people like working together. Uh, take a look at uh, Hawk and Dove. Just says one name. Everyone's off this sinking ship. You know what, guys? It's it's once again Hawk and Dove, Batman and Dove. This week is not doing it for us oh, at all. It never did. And the art is um, horrendous. The first time I'm going to say it is Damien is a kid and he's drawn like a like a teenager. He, he looks like Dick Grayson or Tim Drake or whoever. He doesn't look like Damien. And as a Bat fan, that's you know disappointing. He's a muscular, muscular ten year old in this book. And Hawk and Dove is one of those books that we're actually glad. Oh is now yep. done. Moving right along, the next one we're actually glad to see gone. Static, uh, Static Shock. Shock. Unfortunately, because we really wanted to like this book. I like the character, but boy, oh boy, it, there's nothing quite like not knowing who your character is and then introducing 400 new characters to make it super confusing. And this book is a mess. It's an absolute mess. And I was saying, it's like um, McDaniel. I, I actually am a fan of McDaniel's work, but this in the Static Shock, it's almost... It's shocking how convoluted the images are. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, they try to do this split person time travel thing that just makes, it's just pointless. And then yet another group of characters are introduced in this book and it's too much. What's kind of sad is at the beginning of this run, I was asking the question, who is Static Shock? And at the end of the run, I still have no idea. Moving on to OMAC, the book we're sad to see go. Guys, you know, this OMAC is an example of when um, there's a good book out there that's just not getting the numbers that gets canceled because if no one's buying it and no one's reading it, then what's the point? OMAC is one of those books that we felt was a, a really great, great book. It's fun. Um, you could tell that the team loved uh, what they were doing. Um, they embraced it. But the audience wasn't there for it. And I, I want you guys to, you know, if you like other books like, you know, Animal Man and Frankenstein and maybe the more obscure characters and what I'm talking about, not Batman, not Wonder Woman, you know, not... Yeah, the, not the ones he likes, the ones I like. Yeah. All your third tier guys where you're like, why does that guy have a comic book? Pick those up. Yeah, if you like them, you got to support them because you got to give them the numbers. Um because you can have a bad bat title like Dark Knight, people are still going to buy it because oh. of Batman. That's why you see him in all these uh, in all these other comics. Fourteen something like, other comics. Something like OMAC that needs the viewers. Um, you know, uh, you gotta have the readers. You gotta have the readers to get the numbers. So again, this issue of OMAC is another great. It's read. awesome. It's yeah. so much fun. So much action. Very funny stuff. It, I mean, I can't it, hear you. I'm in the shower is now my favorite line <laughs> next to Omactivate from Omac. Yeah, and the ending. I mean, it's oh. it's. I we're not going to spoil it for you, but there's a great tease at the end that's yes. like, oh, I want more. I want more Omac, and I'm not going to get it now. No and, more Omac. No Omactivate. No Omactivate. Moving on, Stormwatch, a uh, book that blows my mind every month, uh, still continuing. And then uh, today, the big news, uh, that Cornell is uh, leaving this, mm -hmm. and uh, Milligan's coming on, which means a lot more character work, indeed. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this book continues its path to greatness. This is the finale of the first arc. Yeah. Right? And um, one of the things that I had mentioned before about some of the finales that, have, that we've seen, they haven't lived up to, I think, the, the concept that they were trying to set up. And Stormwatch, as you know from what we've been saying, Huge concepts. Massive. Massive. And I love this finale. I think that this was a great finale. It sets up the team. Sets up the team. Sets up that the team now has not just world threats, but now a villain. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that villain is going about certain uh, goals, setting yep. about his goals, and now they know what those goals are or where they are, so they know yep. where to go fight them. Mm -hmm. They've lost the projectionist. Yep. And... and uh, Midnighter and Apollo have oh. an excellent scene that, I mean, I thought was... Hysterically was, was, funny was and great. really well done. Um, for me, this is the best issue of Stormwatch yet. I really thought that it tied it up really nicely. Uh, really like like the art in this book. I love um, Manhunter in this book, too. Yeah. Martian Manhunter is perfect in this book. Just that moment of, like, 
There's a reason I'm on this team, and there's a, I know you think I'm with the Justice League. There's a reason I'm not. Yeah. It's so well done. Pick up Stormwatch. For sure. 100%. Up next, Men of War. Why are all these books the same week, the ones that are being canceled? I don't know. Uh, although we do kind of agree Men of War is probably just changing titles and having new characters in it. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's... G.I. Have, Combat. We're going from one army book to another, so yeah. it'll fill that void. Um we kind of felt that Men of War had lost its way after the first issue. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually liked this issue. Uh, I love the backup. The backup was... Yeah, um, <laughs> the, the backup was great. It, it's a head-scratcher for me. It really I was is not nice. expecting it. So good. But really good. Um, I really liked Sergeant Rock. He, he has a great badass moment here behind mm -hmm. enemy lines. Um, kind of tying it in nicely. I'm I, I'm curious. I would like to see more of Sergeant Rock. That's kind of where I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that Men of War is being canceled. We might see more of him in GI Combat. I mean, there's hope, right? Yeah. So, um, Men of War this this month is a good uh, good comic. I don't know if I'm going to recommend it yet, but I think it was a step up from the previous. Series. For sure, it was, and uh, it's one of those titles that's going to go away. But if you want your uh, War Fix, uh, GI Combat's coming in, but with characters like Unknown Soldier and the Haunted Tank and. Uh, Palmiotti and Gray writing some of it. Oh, it's right. going to take off. It's going to be the new... It's going to be the army version of All-Star Western that yeah. we've been looking for. Up next, Green Arrow. Uh, Green Arrow, uh, the pilot, uh, uh, CW in the States. The pilot has cast their lead actor. And it's one of the guys from Vampire Diaries. Are really? we excited? No. No. Uh, but here's uh, Green Arrow, a book with uh, Jurgens Giffen. It's a lot of fun. Still this... Uh, zombie with uh, Blood Rose story going on, and it looks like they're going to take those characters over to Metropolis uh, and when yeah. they move over to Superman. Which, which is, is kind of odd that you debut characters in a B-listers book to bring it into the A-list the title. A, the, you know, the A-list title, that Superman. I mean, that, that seems a little weird to me. Um, my biggest problem with Green Arrow, I mentioned it last month, was that this seemed very much like fill-in yeah. fill uh, story. They didn't really, and maybe because they had an idea for Superman that they were kind of piggybacking these villains and they kind of crammed it in. Um, you know, hopefully with the new uh, team coming in on Green Arrow, it'll pick back up again. But uh, these two issues, um, and coming from someone who really likes the team, uh, I just didn't feel it. Uh, Green Arrow makes a couple decisions. Uh, anyway, I, I'm going to spoil it for you. He allows uh, a villain to shoot him in the head. It's very confusing. Well, I just as a, as a hero, I just wouldn't take that chance. And I mean, no way. He, he goes in his logic and says, "Well, there was a nine out of ten chance that she wouldn't kill me." But Ooh. still, I mean, like I, I nine out of ten, I still don't take those odds. If, and you know, the other thing that's pointed out when someone fires a gun very close to your head, you get uh, ringing in the ears. Yeah. So how? Um, yeah. You know, tinnitus. I think it's called. Yeah. If you watch Archer, and you'll get what I'm talking about. It's tinnitus. Tinnitus. Uh, uh, yeah, it's bad news. You know, uh, so Green Arrow continues to not be a pickup for me. Yeah, me neither. All right, Justice League International. Uh, here's the weird thing: the last couple issues we had the weird like team up. You fly off here, you fly yeah. off here, and today we get the we're we're sort of teaming up, but over here we're hanging out, and over here we're working yeah. on a thing, and it's kind of a weird mix up. Um, Booster and Batman. Batman gives Booster a pep talk. You get uh, August General and Iron and Godiva having a little. Uh, Hot dog date. Yep. Uh, you get uh, uh, Rocket Red and Guy and uh, Tora fighting a little thing, but it looks like something weird's happening with Rocket Red in there. What did you think of the book? Uh, filler. Yes, and actually, I think this is this uh, Justice League International was one of the books that didn't pay off for us um, last month, and I think this is the worst issue of the run so far. Mm -hmm. um, none of the fun that was in the first two books, even the first three books exists in this issue. It looks like Batman's off the team, which is fine. Again, he's playing the Superman role of pep-talking and being the natural leader to everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm just finding that Booster Gold isn't being written as the funny character. Um, you know, yeah, he's the leader, but I kind of miss the dynamic of the old Justice League International. And if I could have a plea, it's like, um, you know, Judd Winnick knew the voices so well during Generation Lost, and this just I mean, if this is the new direction for this book, I'm kind of worried. I, there was no fun in this book. For me, the only fun was the Godiva, August General, and Iron scenes. 
And uh, why I like that was because Godiva needed a pep talk, and August Jones and Iron doesn't seem like the guy who should give it. No. But then he's sort of dressed like the Thing. Sorry yes. to mention Marvel. No, I mean I want to mention this as well because that's one hundred percent what I was thinking the entire time. Yeah. Is this is Ben Grimm? Yeah. And he even spoke like Ben Grimm. Yeah. And he mentioned that his powers are very similar now that he can't change back to Ben Grimm. So I mean, even though we're we are mentioning the other guys, I mean that's a huge comparison. Um, and it really screamed out to me that that was, you know, at least what they were doing. So, JLI, not a pickup this week. No. Nope. Sorry. Next up, Animal Man, a book that we continue to enjoy. Every week, we tell you guys that between Swamp Thing and Animal Man, these are the books of the New 52 to be picking up. It's real good. Um, you know, if, if Jeff Lemire were here, we'd probably tell him that, well, is this the best book of the New 52? Well, I would say it's one of them for sure. It's definitely one of the best books, if not the best book. Uh, we're... Oh, look! Oh, my God. So It's, it's Jeff yeah, Lemire. It's, it's like you spoke and the devil appeared. so unexpected. It's really great that he's here. <laughs> it's quick. That's, quick. That's amazing. <laughs> now, the big news today uh, is that, and it actually came out today, yeah. uh, that uh, mm -hmm. you're leaving Frankenstein mm -hmm. and moving on to Justice League Dark. That's right. Uh, two of our favorite, one of like, two yeah. of our books that we love so much... Uh, but the person, that, the guy that works with you on Sweet Tooth, yes, is working, moving on to Frankenstein. Yeah, Matt Kent. He's uh, he's a, he's a great cartoonist. He's did a lot of stuff at Top Shelf with me before I kind of worked started working at DC, and not with me, but he was also published by Top Shelf, and uh, we became friends. And and then when I started doing stuff at Vertigo in DC, I kind of calling him for help once in a while, and I needed a break on the art duties of Sweet Tooth for three months, so Matt did that. Oh, and, great. Um, and then, you know, to be honest, Frankenstein, even right from the start, Matt was kind of there because I remember when I got the job, it was last year at Emerald City Con, I got offered that book, and I was staying in a, in a hotel room with Matt that weekend, and so we were just brainstorming Frankenstein ideas all weekend, and, you know, a lot of stuff we talked about went into those first few issues, so Matt was almost always part of the book, really, you know, so and cool. um, so it's just natural for him to take over the, that title. And, that, and then you're moving to Justice League Dark, a team that seems like you've got a lot of toys to play with. Yeah, I mean... To be honest, those are all my favorite characters at DC. I've always loved those kind of B and C and D list characters, you know, and especially the kind of, uh, I've always really liked the mystical on a call characters ever since, you know, the Alan Moore Swan Thing run and stuff. Right. And I've loved Dead Man and all those guys, and Constantine is just, you know, I'm a huge, huge Hellraiser fan. So. Now, you won't be spoiling who you're bringing on to the team, of course, but uh, may I suggest Red Tornado? <laughs> no. Um, oh. I actually, <laughs> this is true, I actually tried to get Red Tornado on the team in my first pitch, but for reasons I cannot disclose, that's not happening. Did it happen? No, it's not happening. Oh, so, so close! It was close. Oh, at least it happened. The pitch was there. <laughs> it's not going to happen for you, Nug. It's going to happen. It's going to happen eventually. Uh, now, uh, this week's Animal Man uh, takes a little bit of a break from the regular action, gets into the movie uh, that Buddy shot that was mentioned in issue one. Uh, did you, you wrote the movie? You wrote, I, I did write the movie. That's fantastic. <laughs> uh, and then the art's a little different. Tell yeah, us about it's that. John Paul Leon, who's fantastic. I mean, he's one of my favorite artists. And um, so I was really excited to work with him. And uh, I knew Travel needed a break after the first arc. And he's I drawing a lot of inside out so, things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so busy. it was a good chance. I thought that was a fun way to have a break, but not really just do like a, something that felt like a film. And actually added to the to the story of Buddy. And, and yeah. He, and, you know, I show the movie of this fictional washed up superhero, and his story is very much, uh, you know, like a, the exact opposite of Buddy Baker's life in many ways. So, um, you know, metaphorically, we're kind of seeing what could happen to Buddy if things go horribly wrong. And, and <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, I think it has resonance for the, the series on a whole. And then we see at the end of the issue, we, we kind of go back to the Bakers and mm -hmm. kind of see what they're up to and set up issue seven. So, yeah. Excellent. All right, well, guys, uh, go pick up Animal Man. Uh, this week it's definitely a pickup. Uh, it'll make our top six, for sure. I have to say it, he's right here. Um, <laughs> top six? Well, we always do six because everybody does five, so we pick six. And we always give honorable mentions. We end up picking ten by the end of the day. Don't worry, Animal Man's going to be there. It's always going to be there. It's always going to be there. I have Scott Snyder's Swamp Thing, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. Oh, no, Throwdown. He's a really overrated writer. I didn't say that. He is. We're moving on to our next book. Hey, where'd your scarf go? You noticed that, huh? Yeah, weird. Time jump. 
Time jump. Uh, our next book, Swamp Thing. Yeah. Uh, odd. We were just talking about it. Uh, Snyder uh, continues to blow us away with Swamp Thing. And it ties in so nicely to Animal Man. Yeah. And uh, clearly they're buddies. They've been working on this together. But boy, oh boy, what a really creepy book this month. Really like this issue. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's when you have great books, you always worry about the sustainability of the greatness. Mm -hmm. But Swamp Thing is really delivering. And we have another fill-in artist this week. Um, but it she, doesn't... And it, Marco Rudy comes on. Yeah. But it doesn't change the feel of the book. No, he does a great job. It's similar layouts to Paquette's work. Real nice. Um, yeah, guys, if if you like stories where your heroes are put through the ringer and you know forced to deal with the bad, um, wow. Uh, you know, this issue really focuses on the question of you know, maybe that, that saying, uh, all it takes for evil to succeed is for good men to do nothing. And um, this issue deals with uh, Alec Holland perhaps taking too long to make that decision. And I love this issue. Uh, yeah, it looks like Alec's taking too long. And uh, you, your quote reminds me of another quote. Uh, good will triumph over evil just as soon as good learns to fight dirtier. Yeah. And I think that's coming. Swamp Thing is a great book. It's excellent. Moving on. It's Detective Comics with the Batman, uh, and they continue to draw the Penguin, like the Joker, and there's a round table of villains in this book yeah. that I have never heard of. Okay, my biggest issue with uh, this comic has been the trying... I mean, I'm not sure where he want what this comic wants to be, because the first issue I felt like was a very bad take on um, Frank Miller's Dark Knight Batman. And I felt that this issue, there are some panels that are almost identical to uh, Dark Knight. And a lot of it with the interrogation scenes of Batman with the criminals, which isn't a bad thing, but it just comes across as wanting to be Frank Miller, not necessarily finding your own voice for the character. Unlike, say, Snyder's book, which, you know, we definitely hear Batman's voice there. Even in I Vampire, Batman has his own voice. He's not trying to be a different character. I find that in Detective Comics, it's Daniel trying to write Frank Miller, Batman. And I know this book is supposed to make Penguin the Badass. Uh, there's a book out there right now making Penguin the Badass. It's called Penguin, Pain and Prejudice, yeah. and it's amazing. Uh, if you're going to draw a Penguin that looks like the Joker and make that Penguin not look great... Then in the middle of the book, have this penguin shown from Arkham City. Uh, yeah. You should know that we're going to compare them. Yeah. And then look at this rogues gallery with Hush, Catwoman, Riddler, Mad Hatter, Rajah Gould, Azrael, Penguin. And then your weird round table has people called Gas Man, Hypnotic, Mr. Combustible. Well, see, the reason for that is Grant Morrison, who Daniel worked with quite a bit, he would use those very obscure bat villains that no one remembers or heard of. So my problem with the book is what seems to be happening is he's grabbing, you know, bits of everybody bits else's of stuff. everyone else's stuff. But I just want to hear his Batman. Yeah, I don't want to hear Frank Miller's Batman because if I did, I'd just reread Dark Knight Returns. Mm -hmm. Not so much Dark Knight Strikes Again, but Dark Knight Returns. And not so much Detective Comics for me. Yeah, and I want this book to be great, because, you know, Detective Comics, DC, this is a book that, with, with Action Comics, should be the best of the bunch. And It's not. It's and not. I'll say this, with the 14 Batman titles out there, I want to read the good ones. I want to read Batman, yeah. I want to read Red Hood, I want to read Catwoman, yeah. Nightwing. There's a lot of good titles right? out there. But I'm up to four already. I know. If I could name, write another one off the top. That is, and I'm gonna hit home, but they sell. So if you want the books to keep going, if you want, if you want bad books to end, don't stop buy them. buying them. If you want good books, buy those buy books. Them. If you support the books that are good, they'll stick around. It's a simple, simple. Logic. If you don't shoot, you can't score. That's what my old gym coach used to say. He, he's a good man. Yeah. Up next, Action Comics. The last issue got super Morrison-y on us. I hope that's a real word. It is now. Yeah. Uh, this continues, but I understood quite a bit of it. Yes. Um, I really like this issue because it's Morrison. But, this is a huge but with this issue. I 
you know, Action Comics is supposed to be the relaunch of Superman, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're you're accepting new readers into what Superman is, and and I think new readers are gonna read this and go, yeah. "What the hell?" Yeah, they really uh, are. And I wouldn't use the word hell. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, this issue is Morrison at his best For, and his worst. Yeah, it's the hardest thing. If you're not familiar with Morrison, you're going to have a hard time getting into this book. It jumps through time. It deals with misplaced time. Um, I had to read it twice uh, just to get a feel of what he was trying to do. And I liked it. But having said that, I'm a Superman fan that has read quite a bit of Superman books. And looking at it with new eyes, I, I'm curious to what new readers to the Superman books think of this. Well, I'll tell you. I mean, at least I'm familiar with Morrison. Right. But I was on board with the five years ago thing, mm -hmm. and this is the jump into the future that I'm like, oh, this features Superman where he's actually Superman. Right. Not finding it, finding his way. Yeah. You still see him dealing with a couple of things, but at least he's capable. Right. Well, this is five years into the future, or five, you know, five years in the past. Then it jumps into the future. However then it far, jumps yeah. Then it back. jumps way back. It's all over the place. Yeah, but time-wise, it's all over the place. But there are lessons that you pick up and things that you notice. And Morrison right. doesn't put a detail in that shouldn't be noticed. And I agree with you on that. And that's why I enjoyed about it. But what um, I what I think is lacking you in can, this yeah, some, in this relaunch is the emotion. Yeah, it's all very clinical. A technical, very technical, very clinical. And you know, for me, I kind of want that feeling. You know, where a kid would, you know, like in Kingdom Come. I don't know if you guys have watched this. I absolutely recommend it because Absolute Kingdom Come Those, just got oh, Last week, yeah, the great big Kingdom Come came uh, out. Go pick it up. And I remember that I had not read comics um, basically since Batman had been replaced after Bane broke his back. And I was getting into comics again. And a friend of mine had recommended Kingdom Come. And I'm reading Kingdom Come and I turn around and they build up to Superman's appearance and his return. And it's a shot from, you know, up above and he's holding two villains. And it's like that emotional impact of seeing the S and the and Superman. I mean, I kind of want this in this relaunch instead of a clinical... It's very science fiction, but devoid of emotion. Yeah. I'm looking for emotion with my Superman. Not to say that I did not enjoy Action Comics this week. It's just a very technical, you know, textbook take on a Superman that we don't know yet. Yeah. And real quick before we take off this week, here's a little Gates of Gotham. Now, you guys have known that Snyder is killing it. Yeah. Absolutely killing it on Batman. And, um, you know, I recommended uh, The Black Mirror to you guys, which had uh, the Dick Grayson Batman, which was Snyder's first bit on it. And this is uh, more Scott Snyder and Kyle Higgins, who's the writer of uh, Nightwing. Um, it's a soft cover trade paperback, uh, Gates of Gotham. Um, if you like what he's doing with the Court of Owls and the history of Gotham, um, this details Gotham's perhaps first uh, supervillain. Um, great book, great read. Um, I love Snyder's work on Batman, so uh, even though Lemare thinks he's overrated, I think he's doing really good. Uh, now it's time for Red Tornado Watch. Take it away. I, I don't believe Red Tornado appears in any of the, the 52 books. This week. This week. Yeah. But there was a chance. It almost. Almost, guys. It was nice of him to do that. That was a stand-up guy. You got yeah. your scarf back. I got my scarf back. Those time jumps. Oh, just... man, they're the worst. Yeah. So our books of the week, uh, Action Comics. And we are agreeing on all of these, but you'll have to pick your number one out of this. Yes, I will. Uh, Action Comics, number six. Pick it up. Great book. Um, Men of War, number six. Like this issue. Sad to see it go. Um, but, you know, G.I. Combat's around G. the corner. G.I. Combat's around the corner, but the backup in this is really cool. Very different take on the Men of War. Uh, OMAC. Oh! Number six. Uh, this book has been in our books of the week. And if I may the say, room. there's a little shot in here of a guy uh, wearing a vest that says Cord Industries, and if that doesn't pique your nerd meter, I don't know what will. Uh, Stormwatch, number six. Brilliant finale. I really like this issue. Can't wait to see where this goes. I love the direction it's headed. Uh, Swamp Thing, number six. This is my book of the week. Well, that's um, weird, because Animal Man is also on our list, and that's my book of the week. So, again, I mean... This always happens. It does always happen, and if you guys aren't buying these books, oh. pick them up. Support these books, because we don't want... 
what happened to OMAC to happen to these great, great titles. Certainly do not. Yeah. Uh, OMAC was such a fun title, and these continue to be so creepy and in the dark, as you can tell by the color coding. And that's another thing, actually. Last week, they came out with a book that was just titled The Dark, and it featured a collection of all the number ones of The Dark. So you can pick that up and Pick catch that up, up and catch up. It's pretty great. Has a Resurrection Man and yeah. these in it, and it's got some dark, Justice League Dark, that our friend Jeff Lemaire is uh, taking over. He's not our, here anymore. He's our friend. Yeah, exactly. But thanks to Jeff Lemaire for coming in today and being on the show. Really great, and thank you for watching. Feel free to comment. Like I said, I'm curious to know what you thought of this week's action comics. I really am, because I'm not sure how people are going to read it. It's a mind twister, and I am going to have to read last week's and this week's together. I might have to reread the whole thing. I, I, I think so. For sure. Uh, so leave us a comment. Uh, tell your friends about the show. If you like us, uh, tell everyone. And if you don't like us, keep your mouth shut because no one likes a whiner. It's true. Right? Uh, go Patriots. Go I Patriots. I will not cheer for the Giants. I can't. It's all right. I can't. Go Patriots. What he said.